Hey hikers and welcome back to Off Grid. My name is Dave and I'm into all things backpacking, hiking, and gear. If you're into that sort of thing too, please think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Today's video is going to be all about my favorite trail. This was started by Brad over at As The Crow Flies Hiking. I'll post his link in the description down below, but he is not the one who encouraged me to do this video. That award is going to go to Dan over at Backpacking Adventures. I'm going to do the shout out right now and just give that one over to him. He's got a great channel. Channel. I'm going to post the uh, link up in the cards and then down in the description for his channel. Make sure you go and check him out. Give him a bunch of love and tell him that Dave sent you. He's got a great channel. He's over on the East Coast. He's in Pennsylvania. And in my early um, videos here, he has been a very encouraging factor and kind of a guiding light and force in all of my videos. So uh, major kudos goes out to him. One of the things that I really love about him, other than the fact that it's another great outdoor channel, make sure you check it out, is that he has just great overall gear videos he's got trip videos he kind of like goes out and does it all and he has a very informative channel that um, you know anybody would really benefit from watching so definitely get on over to his channel and check him out so I've been seeing a couple of videos now on some hikers who have been tagged and or tagged other people and again like I said I haven't been tagged but I figured I'd just throw my video into the mix as well anyway um, even though I'm fairly new to the YouTube game and I'm fairly new new to backpacking in general but I've been on a bunch of hikes now and I was able to kind of narrow it down and pick which one I would select as my overall favorite so far and I gotta say there have been a bunch of candidates there are a lot that I had to choose from a lot of different uh, national parks that I have here that I've been to already um, and I actually have to throw up a, a few more on the wall here because uh, I've been to a couple more and I'm actually planning on going to another one pretty soon but uh, ironically none of those actually ended up making the list today the award for my favorite trail thus far is going to go to and I got it right over here because there is sort of an official name but not really I'll explain in a second but uh, it's gonna go to uh, it's called the Little Lakes Valley to the Gem Lakes Trail and uh, that's why I had to look it up because I was like I don't know if I'm gonna remember the official name of it here but um, this is a hike that I ended up taking while on a glamping trip with a bunch of buddies last July for the 4th of July break. Um, I had a break in work and we all just decided to uh, take our friend's trailer and head on over to the Bishop, California area. More specifically, I think we camped near Tom's Place in the Inyo National Forest. I'll throw a map for that up on the screen for you right now so you can take a look at the general area. And then I'll also, a little bit later on, throw up a um, an all-trails map that I altered myself and I'll let you know kind of like what trail we ended up going on but uh, the the day hike was pretty close to our um, area that we were camping at. One of our buddies actually wasn't feeling well. He didn't um, have a good night's sleep, so he didn't end up joining us. But my girlfriend and my other buddy ended up um, getting up super early and hitting the trail. Now this trail, the reason why I chose this trail, I think you're going to find a lot of common threads with a lot of other YouTubers and their videos. But the reason why I selected this trail, like so many others, is the fact that it was kind of multifaceted. There were a lot of different aspects to this trail that I really enjoyed and I really liked and there was a lot to see and it was also challenging at the same time so I think all those things kind of mixed together in your overall enjoyment it has to kind of be a little bit tough but it has to have some amazing views and um, at the end of the day you kind of have to you know look back on it and go like oh that was that was kind of tough it was kind of rough but at the same time the views were spectacular and I think that is the one common thread that I've found in a lot of these videos so far and mine is no different. So yeah, let's just get into the trail right now. Now, this is before my YouTube and days, so I don't really have any video or B-roll that I can throw in for you guys, but I do have a bunch of uh, pics that I took with my camera that I'll throw in here sporadically, and then I also uh, took, I think, like one or two like shorter videos that I might throw in here as well. So let's throw up the All Trails map for you guys. This is one that I altered myself, so it's officially called the Little Lakes Valley to Gem Lakes Trail, but we didn't end up going all the way down to the Gem Lakes. We wound up stopping right around a point called Chickenfoot Lake. 
and uh, it was uh, an amazing spot. But uh, this is a, an altered uh, map for you guys to take a look at. And I know it says distance wise that it only wound up being about six miles, but I think on this particular day hike that we ended up doing closer to eight. So we might have been doing a lot of like down and backs and kind of doing some offshoots to look at different things. So um, on my own watch that I had that I was tracking the hike, I think we ended up doing about eight miles. The elevation uh, in this particular hike was kind of insane too, kind of adding to the difficulty of it. We started out at a little bit over 10,000 feet of elevation. I'll put the exact number on the screen too if it wasn't on the all trails map um, and the total elevation gain which was like the amount that we actually gained as we were hiking the trail ended up being close to a little bit over 800 feet about 817 feet of elevation gain and that was at the highest point which was right at the point where we stopped uh, had a lunch and kind of like turned back and that was at chicken foot lake so it was definitely a decent hike I'm not used to those types of elevations so you know you're kind of dealing with that factor to begin with of not having as much oxygen to deal with and um, and then just kind of like gaining almost a thousand feet on top of that and elevation throughout your hike was uh, no easy feat especially because I was really new to hiking in general at that point so that was pretty tough so like I said we started out early in the morning I think it was uh, a little bit before eight o'clock we wanted to get to the trailhead because if you ever plan on doing this trip, if you're ever in the Southern California area, uh, just note that this particular trailhead, I think they actually close it during a particular time during the winter. So, I mean, we were there in July, we didn't have any problem, but if you're planning on going like later in the year or during the winter months, just uh, be weary of that and know that it might be closed. But um, we ended up going super early because parking is somewhat limited as far as like the general parking lot. And then you have uh, additional parking I mean, everybody just kind of like parks on the road and just kind of goes further south but you can end up you know hiking half a mile mile or more and just tack that onto your trip just to get to the trailhead so we decided to uh, just go there super early that was a recommendation from my buddy who I think did it before yeah my buddy and my girlfriend definitely did it before so they were like all right we definitely have to get there early if we want to get a decent spot and just hit the trailhead and go right away so that was a good idea we started out, I think it was either the upper 30s or the low 40s in overall temperature, so I had a puffy on when I started out the trail. Um, but I think with the first section had steps, almost like natural steps that they kind of like cut into the trail, whoever made the trail. And um, you know, at 10,000 feet, even though it's that cold, I ended up shedding the, the puffy pretty early on, as soon as we like passed that first portion of just kind of going uphill. But we got over that first ridge and then I think my buddy had his drone with him too so uh, we took a break right there because we were all sucking wind already and he uh, had his own uh, DJI I think it's DJI DVI DJI Mavic uh, drone that he uh, popped up and, and launched and got a really good view I'm kind of looking at the uh, the specs and, and trying to see like exactly what we were looking at at each particular point all trails is great in that they not only give you like the overall map but then they give you kind of like the destinations that are along the way too so the first thing that we saw was Rock Creek another thing that was really great about this trip was the different topography that we got to see right so there was a bunch of different lakes there were a few different meadows um, and then you know the fact that you have to you know traverse like up and down these different areas that really made it pretty special but Rock Creek was the first one that we kind of passed and then going along there was another lake called Marsh Lake which was really awesome there's Heart Lake which was another one and uh what else there's box lake and then there's long lake and then finally you get the chicken foot so at almost every turn on either the right or left side of you, there was something spectacular to see and, uh, you know, great bodies of water, mountains around you too. It was just, you know, really beautiful with the meadows and everything too. I brought my, uh, me and my buddy brought the uh, water purification. We were able to like refill because you had like stream crossings that you were going through too. So, um, you know, we cameled up a little bit and were able to, you know, not really worry about a water source the entire hike. So that was pretty cool too. 
being as challenging as it was for all of us. The final resting spot was a little deviation from the main trail, and that was to Chicken Foot Lake. So you have to walk, I don't know, it was maybe like a quarter mile somewhere around there off of like the main trail down to the Gem Lakes, and you can get off to Chicken Foot. And this is actually a popular backpacking trail as well. We saw, we passed by a few people who were actually hiking in for the day, but we also passed by a family who I think ended up um, camping for at least the night, maybe a couple nights, right at Chicken Foot. We passed their uh, campground as we were kind of coming in. We passed them on the way, kind of walking down to the Gem Lakes, and then once we got to Chicken Foot, we saw their, their campsite. So that was pretty cool too. It was a really great spot and kind of like made me think like, if I, if, all right, if I ever go back, I'm gonna probably, you know, jack that campsite because it was, it was a, it was a pretty cool spot. But Chicken Foot was was pretty amazing too, and obviously they call it that because if you're looking at it from top down view on a map, it just looks like a giant chicken's foot. But uh, that was a great spot to to stop. We ended up stopping, you know, having a good you know half hour to an hour or so. Uh, buddy, you know, threw up the drone again, got some great footage. Uh, we'll see if I can grab some of that and insert that here too, because that would be some great uh, aerial footage to show you guys too. So let's see if you can send me that. But we stopped there, we had a great lunch, we chilled, we cooled down a little bit, and uh, decided to just go back again. So I think, you know, overall I would prefer a loop style trail over a down and back. This is definitely a down and back. But uh, like the stuff that we saw on this trail is just amazing. So, you know, I can't really think of a better hike that I've been on so far than this one. It's definitely challenging. It's definitely super hard to do. We all were challenged doing it. Nobody was really kind of like just like breezing through it, and uh, we were all kind of struggling. I, I ended up bringing a, um, a trekking pole, which I never usually do on a day hike, but this one in particular was pretty challenging, so I thought I needed it, and I definitely did need it, um, especially on the back half of the down and back. You know, it starts to get more sketchy as you tire out, and you want to make sure that you have something a little bit more stable under your feet, so I'm glad I brought that for this particular one. And um, I also learned a lot every single time I either go out on a day hike or I go on a backpacking or camping trip and this was no different either I ended up um, starting out with hiking shoes that wound up being not super comfortable for me so it gave me good ideas to switch them out for trail runners um, and it also gave me another good idea for a day pack as I was carrying a super ultra light one I ended up getting shoulder pain and everything so uh, that was another thing that I kind of learned from this trip was uh, you know to swap out the day pack for something that kind of suited me better so you know all that kind of like culminates into why I love this trip so much you know you learn a lot from it you enjoy a lot from it um, not only the scenery and then getting the exercise and getting outdoors but also I was able to share it with a couple of uh, you know close to either like loved ones or buddy um, to enjoy it even more so I really enjoyed this trip I would highly highly recommend it if you are ever in that particular area um, and not only just from a day hike perspective but also for a camping perspective so you know like I said we were we were camped kind of like down the hill and we were glamping but I was looking at this as kind of like a primo like backpacking spot to go to as well so it's not like super high mileage you're not gonna be uh, destroying you know uh, 10 20 miles in a day for this one but the scenery is top-notch on this trail so that's it. That's going to do it for my favorite trail. Now I want to hear what your favorite trail is. Leave a comment down below if you don't have your own YouTube channel. But if you do have your own YouTube channel, let me know about it. If you haven't done it already or if you have done it already, I would like to see it. And I guess it's my turn to tag somebody else to try to keep this going. Um, I'm pretty sure that they were probably tagged already by the time this video airs. Um, this challenge or this hashtag has probably been out for a little while now. So I'm going to tag Huck from Huck Outdoors as well as Devin over at Backcountry Exposure just because as of the date of this recording I haven't seen them put one out yet and I would like to see what their favorite trail is so you guys are officially tagged. So that's it that's my favorite trail thanks so much for watching this week and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into a different type of I guess hashtag or something that I want to start up and I kind of want to see this uh, continuing trend. I've seen it before with other YouTubing backpackers 
pictures um, and it kind of comes and goes but I, I, I do want to start up another one pretty soon so be on the lookout for that one relatively soon and just to drop a little hint it's going to be basically like the opposite of this <laughs> it's not going to be like what's your worst favorite trail but it's going to be something along that vein so be on the lookout for that coming I would say within the next couple of weeks thanks so much for watching this week guys if you like what you saw please give me the thumbs up and subscribe down below and that's it yeah make sure that if you're headed off grid that you're doing your research and you make it a safe one and i'll see you on the next one